it's our last Radical Acceptance Live. Coming to you real with no makeup and all that great stuff. And the final chapter of Radical Acceptance. So if you've been reading along, congratulations. If you've just been following these lives as like the Cliff's Notes version of Radical Acceptance, then congratulations as well if you've made it this far. <laughs> This last chapter is called Realizing Our True Nature. And I would say this is probably the, I don't know, in Jenisms, I would call this the wooiest chapter, the hardest to kind of follow, especially if you haven't read all the other parts of the book. So I'll try to keep this, I don't know how to, I don't know, in in less wooey language, but it's a little difficult. And here's why, because realizing your true nature in this chapter is really about being one with awareness and presence and kind of letting go of your residual self, I guess I wanna say, it sounds a little wooey. So stick with me if you can. Tara starts and says, we awaken into compassion, and when we do this, we basically free ourselves from that trance that she has talked about throughout this book. So, in other words, we've reached the point where we can respond to things in our lives and to others with compassion instead of falling into the fear and kind of natural reactions or stories that we've told ourselves over and over again. So it's a this is like the culmination of all the things in this book. Um, when we meditate, we now really get into past the beginning meditation. So if you do any sort of meditation and you've done like a beginner's course in meditation, whether on calm or headspace, Oftentimes they'll start with the basics of meditation and then you go into the pro levels, right? Or more advanced practices and you'll notice there's a lot more silence and a lot more time where you're not guided because what you're doing is you're getting out of that observed body and mind and that kind of fades into this more general awareness, right? It's, if you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you will get there if you start a practice. And again, mindfulness meditation is on my list, on my website as one of my top three um, steps in achieving a better best self. So she talks a little bit about this. She says, you let go of the observer, right? And by doing this, we release the focus. We relax into kind of this bigger part, this bigger connection. And it's not ourselves. It's like we can release this self-identity of ourselves. Um, she says it's really that feeling of connectedness to everything around us, that there's no boundaries, right? There's no edge or firm ground, she says. Um, and what did she say? Knowing of the stream of experience, but without the bounding of the you in it. I guess that's a little wooey, so but it's basically going beyond our thoughts and desires and when we can calm them down. And a lot of meditation, I feel, is really focused on trying to let you know that difference. So if you've done any mindfulness meditation, oftentimes you'll do a body scan, um, they'll have you focus perhaps on the breath um, or different sensations in your body, and then they ask you like to focus and then release and let your mind wander and you become aware of your thoughts. And what she's talking about here is that point at which you have focused and you let go of the thoughts and you go beyond the thoughts. So it's like a deeper practice of meditation. And I think 
This chapter is really difficult if you haven't done it. I would encourage you to go through her other chapters and then do um, a practice of mindfulness meditation before um, you come back to this idea because I think it's a little foreign and difficult to have if you're not there quite yet. But basically, she says, you see the universe as it is, that there's space in between your thoughts and you can form kind of this beautiful practice of look and see, let go, and be free. And she even says after this that practice makes this easier, that you need to do it over and over again. She basically goes on to say, like, there's this connection between an absolute and a relative you, this vastness, right, that is all around us that we can be connected to. Um, this part I wrote down because I really liked this part. She then says, we can be tempted oftentimes to fall back into this um, distance, distancing ourselves from our bodies and our emotions. We've talked about this in the past with coping mechanisms, right? And things that we do for that. We can also be tempted to distance ourselves from our relationships with each other. And all of this she has talked about in previous chapters. When we give in to this, we basically leave, it leaves us in this, disembodied daydream is what she says but basically it means we're not grounded in awareness we're not grant grounded in the presence in the truly understanding of the world and how we fit into it she also says the opposite of this can happen where we can immerse ourselves so much into our own emotions and dramas right which this is the trance where we get stuck in that story of ourselves, right? The story of this is how we are. Um, and when we do that, we get lost in the idea that we're this separate, lonely, suffering person. And again, that brings back all of the things we've talked about in the beginning of this book and the previous chapters of falling into this trance, of getting stuck into coping mechanisms, of not being able to live with awareness and compassion. All right, so the other like trick that she talks about in here is when you find yourself in times of what we just talked about where you're kind of feeling disembodied or you're feeling lonely and separate and really in this suffering self that you ask yourself, who is aware at this moment? Who, who is it? And letting go, again, of this little avatar of ourself and realizing that awareness is awareness for awareness sake. It is what it is. It isn't because I know it is. It just is, right? I said it's kind of wooey and meta. But this unconditional presence lets go of fear, of shame, of confusion, right? And it wakes up the compassionate side of us and really wakes up that longing to be free, to be wise, to be liberated. And that awareness, this is really funny. I wrote down, she started talking about awareness and I wrote down one step at a time and she was talking about awareness. And then like three minutes later, she said, and you have to do it one step at a time. So if you're not quite there, what I always tell people is to celebrate the baby steps towards awareness. That's the first step. What that means is, she gives the example, this is a great example if you're a parent, when your kid is sick or has a fever, right, and you start getting overwhelmed with fears, anxieties, like what's going to happen? What do I do? What do I do? What's going to happen? And instead you silence those thoughts and take an action, like to put a cool washcloth on their head. That's the awareness of, I'm aware that this is triggering things in myself. I'm aware of the suffering of others. And one baby step of presence is 
the doing that one little thing. So I kind of love that. She then ends with this interesting guided meditation where she really wants you to relax um, and clear your mind first, which is almost like a mini med meditation. She suggests like doing the body scan. Um, and then she does this kind of focus on listening to your environment. And she really encourages you to do this like with an open sky or scenery or a very open, uncluttered room if you have to be inside. Um, I will post in the comments a similar meditation, guided meditation that she's done before. If you do this, <coughs> excuse me, meditation on your own, make sure that um, you do it in after you have calmed your mind and thoughts because you really need to be um, thinking about and listening and being aware of all the things that are popping up around you. Sorry about that. And then um, she also says during this meditation, you can ask yourself, take a sacred pause and, th and ask who is thinking. Because if you're still surrounded in that idea or personification of yourself doing the thinking and not the acceptance of this is the thought is as it is, not because I thought it then you're not quite there yet. She also says that if you're doing any of this and the idea of who is doing the think who is doing the think thinking or who is aware and you start coming up with these things and it brings up emotions, feelings, you should stop, right? And really pay attention to what comes up and try and focus on those and and resolve those before you continue because that means you're becoming aware of the things in yourself that are really putting up resistance. And she doesn't say that so much, but I think that's the end idea, right? Is that awareness we can't completely let go unless we resolve the issues and radically accept what those things are. So really that's what this is all about. If you do the guided meditation, um, you can probably do a lesser version on your own afterwards just so you get the idea of it. And she says this kind of look into awareness and connection with everything around you can be done as a daily practice, like five to ten minutes. So I love that idea of maybe if you're on a walk outside or even if you're just alone having your cup of coffee in the morning like me that you could go out and take five minutes and really do this open who am I where am I my connectedness to everything else really just being in that state of present awareness and embodying that fully so it's really beautiful if you have enjoyed this book I would love to do another kind of Cliff's Notes version. So if you have ideas for other books that you want me to kind of go through and do these lives with, I'd love to hear about them. I really did enjoy this book and I think that it's one that I would recommend to others who are kind of on the path. It's it's a little more difficult, I think, for some, but there's some really beautiful things, especially in the early chapters that I think everybody would benefit from. So I thank Tara Brock for sharing that with all of us. I hope you enjoyed the mini live versions, Cliff Notes versions of Radical Acceptance. Um, and please feel free to comment or message me or put on my, either on my personal page or on my business page, ideas of books you would like to do this with in the future. And I wish you guys a very happy 22, 20. 20, 2022. That's hard to say. I'm going to have to work out that. And Happy New Year.